I'm Chris Badnock, uh, probably best known from MasterChef Australia as the, the hat wearing beer guy. Um, I've got a really strong philosophy on the whole head to tail kind of approach to, to cooking. I really believe if an animal gets slaughtered for our consumption, we should respect that and, and eat the whole thing. And I do have a rather large passion for beer and combining that with cooking with beer is um, probably what I'm all about. A lot of people talk about, you know, the cost of living's going up and we can't afford this and that. And, and, you know, people buy expensive cuts of meats all the time. And I find that some of the cheaper cuts are often the tastiest. So this book really, you know, encapsulates that philosophy. There's some recipes in the book that people may find a little unusual. Um, and that's only because they've not been exposed to them. They're, there's stuffed pig's trotters and um, crispy pig's tails and, and things like that, pig's ears, all those kinds of things. And they're actually dishes that have been eaten for hundreds and hundreds of years. They're just not popular. You can't buy them at the supermarket. And, and hopefully, you know, people will see how tasty they are. I mean, it's quite a bit to do with pig's ears. Crispy pig's ears are just the best beer snack ever. Um, and they're things that, that just aren't seen, so they're the kind of things I want to convey and they're the things I want to get people interested in. That is so good, I can't even begin to explain it without swearing. <laughs> <laughs> there's lamb, there's beef, um, and there's, there's poultry as well. Bit of game, a um, bit of everything. And I think that you know, we should embrace all of it. You know, there's kangaroo, you know, there's duck, there's all kinds of things, I love it all. And there's a lot of restaurants these days that are actually experimenting with these kinds of things and putting these dishes on their menus. And people are loving them and they're you know, really getting into it. But that needs to translate to the home cook. People need to buy these cuts, go home, cook it and, and love it. It's interesting that beer is only used as beer batter generally. Um, you know, stick any old beer in a batter, come and fry a fish or batter a fish or whatever and, and away you go. But there's so much more to beer and people don't really understand that. I, I use stouts and porters in desserts. Stouts and porters have amazing chocolate coffee characteristics and that matches amazingly with desserts, especially chocolate driven desserts. So I cook with those and match those and, and that works really, really well. Maddie, how are you mate? How are you buddy? Thanks. Good, how are you? Under your finest, please. Sure thing, buddy. You've got all your Belgian beers which have slightly fruity characteristics and they're fantastic to braise in. And your dark Belgian beers um, which work really good with stews and things like that. Then you have fruit beers, there's so many beers out there and those characteristics match really well with food. So it's about time somebody put that on paper and let everybody know about it. <laughs> this book's pretty, pretty amazing opportunity for me. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do is publish a cookbook and being given the opportunity to put my food and my philosophy on eating, cooking, and, and drinking into a volume is, is pretty amazing. <laughs> That's what I love. Beer, not like wine, is, it's not serious. Are you doing a homebrew at the moment? Yeah, I'm brewing my own uh, ginger beer. Sweet. Love a bit of homebrew. I can't get a good ginger beer on the market, so that's what I fiddle with, that's what I play with. So yeah, I love it, it's great. And if people just learn a little bit, go home and try it, open their minds just a little, they might discover something pretty tasty.